Um, so the reason that we spend so much time uh, looking at the plastic in these samples is this is what's really going to tell us how much plastic is in the ocean. Uh, we can't see most of these particles. Even these things that we see on the sample are only a fraction of what is probably in the ocean because so many of the particles are just too small to easily see with the eye. So these samples should catch most of the particles that go through the net that are bigger than a third of a millimeter. So for comparison, let me get my ruler. So here is, well, each of these little dots is a millimeter, each of these little dashes. And so our net that we're using will catch things that are bigger than just a third of the space between each of those little hashes. So it's really, really small. But the thing is, that's actually not that small for things in the ocean. Darcy's looking at phytoplankton that are less than half the size of the things that we're catching in the mantinet, and we think there might be plastic um, breaking down into those sizes too. And Meg is looking at bacteria, which are mm, a hundredth of the size of the things in this jar, and plastic might be interacting with there too. So things get really, really small. And these buckets that we see floating by is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, it's a good analogy because on an iceberg, you only see like a little bit above the surface, but there's this whole big mass below. And I think that's what the plastic is like. The buckets and like the tubes and the uh, jars and stuff that we see floating by is just the tip. And little tiny stuff like this is what is the big mass sort of lurking invisibly below the water.